Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with salt and pepper spare ribs. That's right, they say whoever makes the most delicious thing using the fewest number of ingredients wins, which was the idea that inspired these amazing ribs. And I know I'm not completely impartial, but I think I might have won, as these ribs really were absolutely incredible. Plus, this has to be the easiest method I've ever shared for doing ribs. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by mixing up our salt and pepper rub, which is basically just gonna be salt and pepper, although we are gonna use three different kinds of pepper, which would be some freshly ground black pepper, some freshly ground white pepper, which I always thought should be called tan pepper, and then of course we're gonna add some cayenne. And then last but not least, a little touch of garlic powder, which is not a salt or a pepper, but it is really good in a spice rub for ribs. And that's it, we'll go ahead and give that a quick mix. And our salt and pepper rub is done. And by the way, we call these things rubs, but as you'll see, they're really actually sprinkles. And then once that's set, the only other thing we need to do is stir together a little bit of Dijon mustard with a couple tablespoons of white distilled vinegar. And what we'll do is brush this over our ribs so that our salt and pepper rub sticks on a little better. And also that little touch of acidity will help balance the fattiness of the pork. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and place one big beautiful slab of St. Louis style pork ribs down on a foil lined baking sheet and we'll go ahead and flip that over and start with the underside. And some people like to pull off that membrane that covers the ribs, but I don't. Although I do like to make some very shallow slashes wherever it's exposed, as well as give it the old polka polka with the tip of the knife, which is gonna help all our seasonings penetrate deeper inside. And then once that's been properly pierced, including under that little meat flap, we'll go ahead and paint over our vinegar mustard mixture. And then once that's been covered with about half of the mixture, We'll go ahead and sprinkle over about 40% of our salt and pepper rub, which like I said, we really don't rub, we always sprinkle, since that's gonna give you a much more even coating. And yes, of course you could do a couple slabs of those smaller baby back ribs instead. I mean, you guys are after all the LeBron James of your salt and pepper rib games, but personally my vote is to use the St. Louis style ribs, which I think work really well here. And that's it, once just about half of that mixture's been applied, We'll go ahead and flip this over and repeat that exact same process on this side. And the reason I said to only do about 40% of that salt and pepper mixture on the bottom is because I think we want a little more on this side, which is the meatier side, but we're not gonna quite use all the remaining 60%, since I generally like to reserve a teaspoon or two in case we wanna do a little bit of seasoning after these are cooked. And if we don't end up using it, we could just save it to use for our coleslaw and or potato salad. But anyway, we'll go ahead and paint and salt and pepper this side. And then what we should do, time permitting, is transfer this into the fridge uncovered for about four hours or so, or if you want, you could even go overnight. And that's gonna give that salt and pepper enough time to work its way into the meat. And you will definitely end up with a juicier, more flavorful product. But if you have to cook it right away, go ahead. It will still come out really good. And then once we are ready to go, we're gonna cook these using the easiest rib method ever invented. We are simply gonna place these into the center of a 300 degree oven for about three hours or until tender. That's it. No start high, finish low, or start low, finish high, or wrapping and unwrapping and rewrapping. We are just gonna simply cook these until they're done. But one quick thing I do like to do is about halfway through, pull them out and give them a quick basting with the accumulated juices. Okay, so after about an hour and a half, you should have a decent puddle of rendered pork fat, which we'll go ahead and brush over the top. And don't worry about the other side, it's fine. And that's it, after that brief basting, we will pop that back in for another hour and a half or until perfectly tender, and hopefully looking a little something like this. Oh yeah. And by the way, when I say perfectly tender, I do not mean falling off the bone. Okay, how we test these is with the tip of a knife, which should slide into that meat with almost no pressure. Okay, we definitely want that meat to come very cleanly off the bone once we bite it. But if that meat is falling and collapsing off the bone when we cut it, it's overcooked. And then what we'll do at this point is let it rest for about 15 minutes before we cut them. And while they sit, we might as well give them one more base with those beautiful accumulated juices. And that's it, once these have rested, we'll go ahead and slice them up. And while these are incredibly flavorful on their own, I went ahead and paired mine with our famous all-American barbecue sauce, which of course we have a video for, which you've hopefully already seen. And since that sauce is a sweet and tangy Kansas City style, it is the perfect complement to these intensely flavored pepper spice ribs. So I slathered some on, and that my friends, despite featuring only a couple ingredients, were some of the best ribs I've tasted in a very long time. Okay, this recipe was a great reminder to me of just how delicious pork ribs are when we don't try to do too much to them. And I'm as guilty as anyone, 
Making these with marinades and rubs that have like 20 ingredients. But the fairly minimalist approach here really was an eye opener and taste bud opener. Oh, and not to brag, but you can see just how clean that meat comes off the bone when you bite. That is a perfectly cooked rib. And I think as far as service goes, just serving them right off the cutting board with your sauce or sauces nearby is perfectly acceptable. But as you might know, I'm contractually obligated to take some pictures. So I went ahead and plated some up and squeezed over some more of our all-American barbecue sauce, which is called that because all Americans love it. And after taking a few too many pictures, I proceeded to enjoy these. And I know I already said it a few times, but let me say it one more time. These really were amazing. Oh, and just because I did mine in a 300 degree oven, doesn't mean you can't do yours over indirect heat in your covered charcoal or gas grill. Okay, it should work out just about the same. Which reminds me, I'm not saying all those overly complicated fussy rib recipes are wrong, but what I am saying is a lot of that might be unnecessary. Since all we did here is put these in the oven, and other than a quick basting, all we did is let these slowly roast until tender. And yet they're still very moist and juicy and not dry at all. So not only did our simple ingredient list pay off, but our very simple cooking method did as well, which is why I really do hope you give these a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.